One of the biggest mysteries in the universe is life. In our efforts towards understanding this, we have delved deep into the labyrinth of life, at the very composition of it. Amazed with discoveries of what lies underneath, intrigued with ignorance of its intricate design, the journey into this maze continues uncharted, throwing up little bits of knowledge into the global pool of information. Involved in this amazing world is the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, popularly called the CCMB. Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi dedicated to the nation the new building complex of the 10-year-old CCMB in front of one of the most distinguished gatherings at such an occasion anywhere, anytime. A gathering that represented excellence of the highest level in many fields of human endeavor, from diplomacy and politics to science and art. I explained to my colleagues... A speaker at this function called the CCMB the jewel in the crown of Indian biological research. CCMB is widely known for its exquisite architecture and its interiors. It symbolizes beauty as both science and art do. But what has made CCMB stand out is that it has attempted to answer some of the most important and difficult questions relating to life. Questions that have intrigued scientists and laymen alike all through history. How did the first cell arise on which Darwinian evolution could operate to give rise to the millions of species around? Did it happen on our planet somewhere between 3.5 to 4 billion years ago from chemicals that are a part of today's living systems and probably existed in the environment at that time? Or was life seeded from elsewhere? If so, is this process continuing even now on our planet? We should then find evidence of the most primitive life forms, the simple bacteria in the uppermost heights of our atmosphere. Something CCMB has been investigating recently along with a group of other scientists from India and abroad. What is the extent and basis of genetic diversity in our wildlife or even in our human population? No country has such human biodiversity as we have. So where did the six tribes of Andaman and Nicobar come from? The work of CCMB scientists has thrown important light on answers to those questions. That the DNA is a genetic material is now common knowledge. DNA is organized in cells in the forms of genes that are strung together to give structures called chromosomes. Human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Between men and women, there is a difference of only one chromosome. An XX pair makes her and an XY pair makes him. What is the molecular mechanism that underlies maleness? And what is the nature of the exotic organisms that make biology so interesting? Such as organisms that live merrily in Antarctica, where temperatures rarely go above freezing. CCMB scientists have made major headways in answering these questions. The unit of life is a cell. Higher organisms have a large variety of cells organized in space in very special ways. A pathologist identifies a disease by looking at the changes in the pattern of cell organization within a tissue. The various attributes of a cell, its chemistry, biochemistry, structure and function are highly regulated, both internally and in response to the environment. So, our muscle regenerates after a minor injury. How does that happen? Ask the CCMB scientists. In normal cells, growth is regulated. When you have a cut, 
the adjoining cells start multiplying, but stop multiplying when the wound is healed. Cancer cells do not respond to this stop signal. Why is it so? CCMB scientists have adopted many approaches, theoretical and experimental, to answer this question. Even though cancer cells are in some ways like other undesirable infectious agents, they escape rejection by our immune system, which protects us from succumbing to the infections we receive from the environment every minute. CCMB scientists have identified molecules that induce or stimulate our immune system. They have been studying genes called oncogenes that can cause cancer, as well as genes called tumor suppressor genes that prevent cancer. Scientists at the CCMB have also been studying in detail the molecular mechanisms, such as phosphorylation of the amino acid tyrosine, that may represent an important step in a normal cell turning cancerous. They have also looked at the amazing and mysterious world of cell motion and cell growth to understand the migratory property of the cancer cell. Two other areas where CCMB scientists have been doing exciting work are development and stress, such as heat and cold stress, and high salinity. Their study focuses on mechanisms that determine the positioning of organs in the body of the fruit fly, particularly how genes control formation of limbs. Also being studied is the role played in the development of proteins that prevent heat shock. An important gene called PRO-U that confers tolerance to high salt was first sequenced by CCMB scientists. An offshoot of this study has been the development of a new and general process for the production of genetically engineered proteins which has been commercialized. How is the expression of genes in DNA regulated? Our liver has a gene for insulin, but it does not produce insulin, which is made only by certain cells of the pancreas. An important enzyme, and enzymes are biological catalysts, that plays a role in transferring the information from DNA eventually to proteins is RNA polymerase. This enzyme has been studied extensively in the CCMB. Parts of our DNA keep on moving from one place in our genome to another, apparently on their own whim and fancy. This movement, at times, leads to enormous damage to the organism. How may we counter the ill effects of such mobile elements? We hope the answer will come from the CCMB. How do hormones regulate function, for example, in the salivary and tear glands? Do the secretions of these glands have any role in chemical communications? CCMB scientists are also studying the role of hormones in epithelial cells and the female reproductive tract. This important question has been of great interest to scientists. One of the most important constituents of all living systems are proteins which are made up of 20 amino acids strung together in a long chain. A chain which then acquires a specific three-dimensional structure to perform its function, be it of an enzyme catalyst, a fighting antibody, a structural protein, or a hormone. How is this three-dimensional structure acquired? CCMB scientists have found that one of the eye lens proteins, alpha crystalline, provides vital help in this process. Speaking of the eye, CCMB scientists have made a vital contribution to our understanding of the mechanism of cataract formation. CCMB scientists discovered a well-known antimicrobial protein, seminal plasmin, consisting of 47 amino acids. The scientists then intelligently dissected the seminal plasmin molecule and came up with a small fragment which they altered slightly to give a very small protein, a peptide, which has a very high level of antimicrobial activity. This peptide is now in the catalogue of an international biochemical company. Organization in space of all entities, be they molecules, cellular structures or cells, is crucial in living systems 
to allow them to function as they should. It has been shown in the CCMB that a protein called lamin plays an important role in the organization of the nucleus, the structure inside the cells of higher organisms that contains the bulk of cellular genetic material, DNA. All cells are confined in space by membranes which contain proteins and lipids. How do these two integral and important components that are involved in the reaction of the cell with the environment interact with each other? This is cutting-edge science where the CCMB scientists have made a worthwhile contribution. CCMB has not ignored plants that preceded animals on our earth. Normally Seeds in plants are a consequence of fertilization, as in animals. However, in some plants, seeds are formed without fertilization, a process called apomixis. A novel gene, dyad, has been shown by CCMB scientists to be significantly important in understanding apomixis. As important as cutting-edge science is the conservation of rare animals to CCMB. If approximately 100 species in the world are getting extinct each day, where would biodiversity be in the future? The Laboratory for Conservation of Endangered Species, LACOMS, set up by CCMB as a national program, will be the first institution in the world to address this crucial issue through biotechnological intervention. The scientific team at LACOMS has standardized protocols for assisted reproduction of these endangered species. The team has developed a semen cryobank of tigers, lions and leopards. The germplasm and tissue banks will help in creating already extinct species using surrogate mothers if living tissues are available in frozen condition. The famous Nobel Prize winning scientist and author Jacques Monod always advised his colleagues not to do an experiment unless they had a theory. CCMB has not neglected theoretical biology. Biological systems are often extremely complex. CCMB scientists have met the challenge of modeling such complex biological systems and testing predictions based on their models. For the last three years, bioinformatics has become a part of the common vocabulary of people around the world. CCMB was one of the first institutions more than 15 years ago to start a large group on bioinformatics. It is not surprising that CCMB has published some 1,200 research papers in some of the world's best known journals, the impact of which on the scientific community has been high. CCMB was built on three principles function, aesthetics, and cost. The objective was to put together an institution at the lowest cost, which would be beautiful and highly functional. And that is what CCMB is. Beautiful, unostentatious, and functional. Everything and everyone in CCMB works, and works all the time. CCMB was set up primarily to conduct outstanding research in frontier and multidisciplinary areas of modern biology and to seek potential applications of such work. This was done in the belief that all outstanding basic work leads to applications, often unexpected, sooner or later. Indeed, this has happened in CCMB. The Indian technique of DNA fingerprinting which has revolutionized forensic medicine in the country, was developed in the CCMB as an outcome of basic research directed towards finding out what makes a male a male. The first genetically engineered product produced in the country, the hepatitis B vaccine by Shantha Biotech, was developed in the CCMB. The CCMB scientists discovered an inhibitor of the degradation of RNA the first cousin of DNA, which acts as an intermediate in the transfer of information from DNA to protein. This inhibitor, RNA-SYN, is now with a biotech company in Bangalore, 
the Bangalore G9 for commercialization. Some of the other companies with which CCMB is collaborating in generating revenue are EID Parry, Satyam Computers, Biological E, Dr. Reddy's Research Foundation, and Isis Cosmos. Some of CCMB's own current work, likely to be commercialized, pertains to developing disease-resistant rice varieties and transgenic fish that grow faster and bigger. All this has been possible because of CCMB possessing one of the best infrastructures of any scientific laboratory in the world. One of the most automated labs anywhere it has a closed-circuit TV system for internal communication and a computerized monitoring system that monitors in real time some 500 activities as diverse as the water level in water reservoirs and the temperature of freezers. The Department of Atomic Energy has located its laboratory to make certain special radioactive isotopes needed for biological research in the country in the campus of the CCMB. What further distinguishes the CCMB from other institutions is its culture. There are no divisions in the CCMB, for nature does not compartmentalize knowledge. There are only groups devoted to studying a particular problem. The laboratory operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days in a year. And nothing is held up because of trivial problems such as lack of water or power or availability of this or that. Its communication channels are open to everyone round the clock. It provides facilities for its staff to live close by. In CCMB, human dignity is highly respected and there is a very high level of staff satisfaction. Outstanding institutions do not come up by themselves. They are built by outstanding individuals. The CCMB was conceived, created and directed for its first 13 years by Dr. Pushpa Bhargava, one of India's brightest and most respected scientists. He had a vision and he turned it into reality, something given to very few. Indeed, if there is an institution anywhere that has been ahead of its time over a period of 25 years, it is the CCMB. It anticipates the future challenges, prepares itself for them, and then takes a step ahead of others to meet them.